Hi everyone, Nathan here with ATC Cooling and Heating. Today we're going to dig into an interesting issue a customer was having with their geothermal system and then later we will investigate the most common types of geothermal system loops. Now we install the majority of geothermal systems in our corner of Northeast Tennessee, but we also get called in to consult with other companies' geothermal issues on a fairly regular basis. In some cases, the systems never worked and in others there's a request for an improvement or some sort of change. One case in particular was really very interesting. In that case we found a four ton system with vertical well loops. I'll show you what that is in just a second. But there were two big issues. First, the system needed one circuit per ton but only had three circuits, not enough for four tons. It's just not enough for proper water flow. And secondly, and more dramatically, the water coming back from the loops would get super hot, super fast, causing the system to shut down on high limit. In a closed loop system, water circulates from the loop to the geothermal system in the house and then back out. During AC operation, the heat from the house is transferred to the water, which then goes back to the ground loop to release the heat. When the water returns too hot, that's a sign that something is wrong with the loop. And after some digging, we discovered that the loops were just way too short, only 100 to 200 feet deep instead of the necessary 400 feet. For a four ton system, that's just not enough pipe to transfer the heat back into the ground. The water would circulate the water, trying to dump the heat into the ground, but each circuit of the water returned hotter and hotter water as the ground quickly became heat soaked. The only solution? Drill deeper wells though that can be quite costly. There are four main types of loops used in geothermal system. First, we have vertical loops, like in the case that we just discussed. For a vertical loop, you have a four inch wide hole that is drilled down into the ground. 400 feet is about how deep you want to make these. Each of the loops should be at least 20 feet apart, and you're looking for about three gallons per minute per ton in terms of water flow. The water comes out of the geothermal system all the way down the bottom of the loop, comes back around, and then goes right back out to the geothermal system. Vertical loops are really good when you have limited space. They don't take up much of your yard, and your landscaping doesn't get disturbed like in some of the other loop choices. Next up is the horizontal loop, and if you have enough land, this is the most cost-effective option. In a horizontal loop, you have a trench that is dug five to six feet deep. You lay out the pipe kind of like it's a slinky all the way down the trench. And you're looking for about 125 to 150 feet per ton of system. If you have more than one such trench, you want them to be at least 20 feet apart. Water comes out the system, goes across that slinky, and then comes back into your geothermal system. Horizontal systems need a lot of space, and sometimes they need up to an acre of room in your yard. So if your house is on a mountain with very shallow bedrock, a horizontal loop is not for you. Another option is a lake or a pond loop. These systems place the pipe loop underwater in the lake or the pond with the water surface at least 8 to 10 feet above the pipes to avoid interference and freezing. Water with antifreeze circulates out into the lake or the pond, releases its heat, and returns to the geo unit. Make sure, of course, that the loop is sized correctly for your system, and if your lake level varies significantly through the year, you will want to wait to the lowest water level to install your piping. Lastly, we have open water systems. For an open loop, a well is drilled, and geothermal water is pumped up to your geothermal system from the bottom of the well, and dumped back into the top of the well. Note how those pipes in my diagram here don't connect. It is, after all, an open loop system. Now the flow rate is really critical. You need 1.5 gallons per minute per ton. In a three ton system, for example, then, you would need 4.5 gallons per minute. Open loops are simple, but they may require a little bit more maintenance owing to the openness of their system. That said, they do have higher efficiencies than closed systems. In most cases, we can fit a geothermal system to any home or business. 
If you're having trouble with your geothermal system or maybe considering installing one, we're here to help. Leave me a comment below or visit us at atcservice.com. Thanks for watching.